It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we are helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners and owners here at Corhorn Financial Group. With me in the KFG studios, my business partners and fellow CFPs, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Well, we are in the midst of the most contentious election in the history of contentious elections in history. <laughs> so the, my question is, what's ahead for the markets, for the economy, but most importantly, for your financial future? That and more coming up this hour of Wise Money. How do you distill all of this? Some of you might not have uh, as, as gleeful a tone in your voice as Kevin does when you're talking about this craziness that has happened this week. So anyway, we've got questions. Hopefully, we are going to talk about the markets, what all this means to you with the election and everything else. But if you have questions, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to help you. You can find us online, wisemoneyshow.com. Submit a question right there on the right. You can call or text us, 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. And then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. Most questions, most engagement with the show comes through social media. Find us there, Facebook and YouTube. Get the most traffic. But Instagram, Twitter, you can find us there. Connect with us and leave questions there as well. Well, it's official. We still don't know who the president is. And I, I remember, I'm just telling you right now, we are recording this on Friday and it airs live on Saturday and goes on podcast. I don't know when you're listening to this, right? But it, is, it just feels like things are changing by the moment. But I will tell you, a week ago when we were recording, I said, we're not going to know who it is, who, who's the president. So we're still in the midst of this craziness. But you know what? If you would have told me a week ago, we're not going to know who the president is, uh, in seven days, I would have said, of course, I, I, I believe that too. But if you would have said the, the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones would both advance greater than 1% every day for four straight days for the first time since 1982, <laughs> in the midst of that, I would have said, go take a nap. Like you, that, you, that does, That's gibberish. And that's what's happened. The stock market has absolutely soared. It's near 10% increase in the first four days. That is nuts in the in the midst of uncertainty. So does the market like un uncertainty? What is going on here? Uh, that's the fantastic question right there. What is going on? And it, it's kind of the reminder that it, um, it wasn't just about a presidential election either, was it? Uh, there, there's more to the story here. And I, I think we're still going to be sorting this out weeks and weeks from now. Yeah. Um, you know, figuring out what are the implications of this election and what does it mean for the future? And th that right now, to me, has a lot of people, well, I guess you could say maybe about half of Americans either feeling some amount of relief, maybe even optimism about the future, another half of Americans feeling maybe some fear or some dread about the future. Um, and I it's think split we're, right we're, down the middle, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. We're each feeling both of those. Right, because we everything hangs in the balance. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what people are feeling, but I mean, the good thing about what's happening right now is that this is a year where there's not really been anything that's unanticipated, <laughs> unexpected. Yeah, there's been nothing that makes people feel like they're completely <laughs> out of control. So, uh, so here's here's the big thing then, and we're going to get into the markets uh, right here in just a second. But I mean, the big thing is. Um, you need to be positioning your financial life for growth. Kevin, we were just talking about this before we turned it on. I mean, it almost, it almost doesn't matter. It doesn't matter really who's in the yeah. Oval Office. You need to continue taking the right wise steps in your financial life. And don't, don't have, don't put on cement shoes because you didn't like how the election's gone so far. You need to continue to make progress in your financial life. Try to overcome the distraction of what's going on right now. Yeah, I would I would adjust what you said, Mike. You said it almost doesn't matter, and I'm just going to go on the record as saying it does not matter. There are implications. It, but sure, yes. sure there are. But but this is this is where if you say what should I be doing right now? What you should be doing right now is making a personal plan for growth. Making if you're if you're married and have a family, create a family plan for growth. If have more kids. That's what Kevin if, just said. No, I. But, <laughs> but but how do you grow as a family? 
And, and and how are your family meetings going to improve? How are your family vacations going to improve? How is Thanksgiving going to be better this year than it ever has? So take the things that you have control over and exercise control over those. Because you're right, half of the people are saying, I cannot believe that that anyone could vote for that guy. And the other half of the people are saying, I cannot believe that anyone could vote for that guy. Mm-hmm. So you so you have this incredibly divided country, and I'm saying, stop it. Stop it right now. We're not that far apart as people. And so because if you look at your neighbors and the people that are making this country work, so let's do that. Let's keep making this country work. Yeah. And, and folks, for the most part, don't come to us for political advice they don't come for religious advice they don't come for us to make values judgment yeah. judgments on what they're doing they come to say hey listen i need strategy and execution in my finances in my finances so can you help me with my strategy and then once we've got the great we have a great strategy help me with execution and that's what we want to be focused on right now yeah you're you're exactly right and you know I, i'll be the first to say just you know disclaimer we don't know the future right our clients don't come to us to find out the future we're not some sort of fortune tellers um you know we don't have a crystal ball or anything but instead we we find a lot of comfort in looking backwards looking at history what are the lessons that can be gleaned from past experiences. And obviously, we've never lived through a pandemic like this in modern history. And, um, you know, we, we don't know exactly how this whole thing plays out after an economy has been shut off and then turned back on. We don't know how this next, this election is going to play out. But we can look backwards and say, you know what? This country works. It mm-hmm. works with great presidents and it works with knuckleheads in, in the White <laughs> House as well, right? You, you look back on history, and what you don't want to do is bet against America. Mm. You, you don't want to lose sight of the fact that growth does happen in this country, regardless of which party is in office. So, so your reminder, Kevin, I think is just spot on. And, and the word that I would use to go along with that is this reminder that optimism is what helps you win with your investment approach in particular. Optimism is what helps you win with your financial life in general. Yeah. And to me, that optimism is what you want to take to your planning approach. That's what you need to show up with when you're talking to your financial advisor about what do I do next? What does this mean for me? Don't lose sight of optimism because that is what drives the growth for you. So if you're feeling stuck financially, possibly because of the elections or you are waiting you were waiting. You you intentionally stuck yourself. It's, you stopped because you wanted to see how this was going to play out. Don't do that. Stop stopping. You know, yeah. Get unstuck. Yeah. And, and work with work with a coach. Work with your certified financial planner. And and in regards to the market, again, this is just baffling how quickly things have surged. However, history says election years are pretty good years in the market. History says even after the election, markets usually get a boost. I can go back to. Even the Obama first Obama election during the midst of the 08 crash after the election, the market did great for a few weeks. Great. And so history tells you to stay the course and continue. Don't don't stop. Don't yeah. stop. Yeah. The same thing happened in 2012 as well, because, again, the half the population said if Obama gets reelected, things are over. This country is completely doomed. And the people that moved to the sidelines and it, it missed, they missed it because not only between the election and the end of the year, but 2013, oh, yeah. all of the growth came that, that was all the growth we had for the next three years. We're going to yeah. get into more tangible application of this. So we've got that and more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Man, that's some good stuff. All right. Hey, YouTube, thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show. You're at the Wise Money Show channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you're made aware every time we drop a video. Right now, this is our one-hour talk show that airs right here on this channel at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturday mornings, also on our podcast as well. It's a full one-hour show. It also airs on a couple radio stations in northern Indiana, but also on this 
uh, channel, you get Wise Money content all throughout the week as well. Every single business day, I'm coming to you with a wise financial nugget, something that you can apply in your finances every single day. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and like the content, share it, and leave comments, and smash that thumbs up button. Thank you. This is really good. I mean, that is the message people needed to hear. And, uh, and let's continue to weave that in while we hit some of the things that are also though on people's minds then like, so what do you do with new money? What if, what if you'd sat on the sidelines with some long-term money? Does this mean your short-term money you need to jump on and try and buy at these prices? Um, you know, that some of the tax oh planning, word. right? That is such a horrible question. I, I know. So let's get into But I mean, that's, but it's being asked all the time. Well, and yeah. it's real because there is still a, so people are looking, the stock markets at an all, this is what happens. Stock market is at all time high. I've been sitting on the sidelines since Dow 24,000. It's now 28,000. I'm like, I need to get in. Promise you, you get in at 28, <laughs> the, the, the market's going 26. Yeah. And so this is this is where for sure you need a, a strategy. Yeah, that's right. All right, let's get into it. So we'll, we'll talk investments, then we'll get into, get into taxes. This is good stuff. So I got to stop. Reset. All right, here we go. Do you jump on the stock market bandwagon this week because of what's happened since the election? What do you do with new money? What are some of the other implications and potential actions you need to take in your financial life because of the way things have played out thus far with the election process? We're hitting that right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn, Josh Gregory, Every episode of The Wise Money Show is on podcast. So when you're out and about, you're doing some whatever, and you throw the the uh, headphones in, turn on podcast, you'll find The Wise Money Show. Wherever you listen, just search Wise Money Show, subscribe to it, rate the show, leave comments as well. We appreciate it. All right. So we still don't know as of right now, this is being recorded Friday morning, airs on YouTube, podcast, and, and on radio on Saturday morning. A lot can happen in 16 or 18 hours here. Um, we still don't know who wins uh, the election. However, the markets have been just crazy. And yet st it, stats have shown people have been more nervous about this election and this year um, than really any time in the past. Trillions of dollars sitting on the sidelines. Now, the market's up 10 percent just in a week. What do you do? What do you do? You jump on that wave. You throw new money in. Do you take your short term money that you thought, well, maybe I might need this and you gamble and throw it in the market? What do you do? No, you you go you go back and 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 hit the reset button. And the the I would want to talk to one specific group of people. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, but I gotta go through a few layers to get there. So if you're a business owner and you got a PPP loan this year, you need to be looking at your tax projection to say, hey, what what is my profit for the year? What am I be paying taxes on? But if it's artificially high because I received a PPP loan, what do I do? Then, so it, and that because it's possible that some business owners received a PPP loan in April, that when when the when they rolled out the program, people got in line, got their loan, not knowing what the future would hold. With some businesses, things bounce back almost immediately. So if you if your business bounced back in second or third quarter and you haven't really seen a disruption this year in your financial results, congratulations, that's amazing, but think I've got to pay the kind of the normal taxes that I would uh, normally typically pay. But in addition to that, I've got the PPP money that most likely I would plan on that being taxable. So what does that look like in the form of a tax projection? So that's that, but that's not even the group of people that I want to talk to. The group of people that I want to talk to are the business owners whose industries have been absolutely flattened. And so I was, I was meeting with some clients this week and their projected loss for this year is going to be around uh, a half million bucks. So, wow. so what do you do with that? Well, because they're both over 60, they have access to money that's in their 401k. They can do an in-service withdrawal, take that 401k money, put it in their IRA. Once it's in their IRA, they can convert 
and create taxable income and basically soak up some of those losses. So you, if you, so I'm going to say there in, in both scenarios, if my business has made more money artificially because I got a PPP loan, which was forgiven. And now that's, that's goosed up my profit above what, what is normal. Or if my industry has been absolutely hammered and my losses are breathtaking and I'm, I'm struggling to figure out how do I survive this? You want to be doing planning, especially on the, on the, on the downside of that equation. I, I love the fact that you're pointing back to the planning opportunities that are presented um, not only by this pandemic, this whole crazy year that we've been living through, but even um, just the the pending outcome of this election, right? Um, you know, I, I'm reminded one of the themes this year has been that there have been winners and losers. Mm-hmm. There have been those that have had this crazy, amazing spike or rebound, and then those that have been left behind in some of that so far. Mm-hmm. And that's been true across the board in, yeah. in the in the stock market. Um, you can look at it globally as well. And so I, I think it's important to recognize, yeah, when when there are major um, changes in the direction of all these crosswinds that we're facing as a nation, there are going to be winners and losers. And I, I think that's going to be true of this election as well. There are going to be some who benefit greatly because of this and some who, boy, the, the wind just kind of dropped out of your sails. You know, it's it's like you've stalled mm-hmm. potentially. And the question is, as an investor, do you know the difference between the two? Can you even anticipate which industries are going to be winners and losers? Most people can't. I mean, I, I look back to this spring, and most industries didn't even know that they were going to be the winners. You know, the RV right? industry, for, for sure. example, here in our backyard, um, you know, it was circling the wagons, trying to get real conservative, very worried coming into this pandemic. And then just weeks later, all of a sudden, you know, they're having an amazing banner year like they've never, ever seen before. They didn't even know that this was coming. Yep. Right. So to me, I, I would I would caution against overconfidence for, for investors. When you have a year where there are these amazing gains with certain high-flying stocks, you, you look backwards at the spring and you say, well, of course that was going to happen. I mean, I, I practically knew that was going to happen. No, you didn't. And, and neither did anybody else. And so don't go into your next investment decision feeling overconfident because you've had some short-term wins here. It's time to get back to principles and get back to your financial plan and let that drive how you're going to posture um, with your investments. So if you're listening to this and you're saying, of course, I'm doing that, that's that's what I'm already doing. I'm working with my financial planner. And again, if you work with a financial planner, make sure it's someone who's certified. And I'm analyzing my financial life in the six areas. Here's the deal. There are there are your friends and neighbors who aren't. They're like a a sleeping fish. So we we went to the the Cayman Islands to 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 go to go. Sco- I cannot never, wait to hear I've this never story. Heard a sleeping fish analogy. I, know, I can't so, wait to hear. Here it. it is. So so we went to the Cayman Islands. We had a friend who turned seventy, and he's a big time scuba diver. And so we all got certified and went down for a seventieth birthday and had a, a, a great time. And so it, we would snorkel out in front of the the uh, hotel, and then we would scuba dive a couple different times. But we, so you'd snorkel at night. And you'd you'd have your flashlight, and you'd see these fish, and they're sleeping. <laughs> and so a How fish. How do you tell that, the difference? Be, because because they're they're right there. Their their eyes are open because yep. fish don't shut their eyes, and they're they're kind of listing to one side, and they're just sitting there, right or left. Yeah. <laughs> That's an uh, important question this year. I'm just kidding. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> they're leaning right down the middle. Okay. So there you go. Uh, so. Um, so anyway, I can't tell you how many times myself and my children would go down to grab one of these sleeping fish, and you're like, okay, and you say, one, two, grab it, and, you, and then they shoot out of your hands as quickly as you, you cannot yeah. catch a sleeping fish. And But there are people right now that are like sleeping fish, they're dazed, 
and they're and they're sleeping they're not moving and they're kind of overwhelmed and so what you need to help if you've already hit the reset button you're like dude i know this i'm i'm doing it then help someone next to you who's who's kind of stuck and and they look like a sleeping fish so you just kind of grab them and they which shoot looks, right out which looks just like an awake fish by yeah, the way. that's right <laughs> it's, except they're not moving I, I just learned that you can go t- uh, cow tipping in the ocean right here yeah. this is, this is what kevin does with his free time it's fabulous uh, okay so so the, the point is to be making progress in your financial life and with with new money i josh i I love the reminder about having overconfidence and how easy that is in all markets, but certainly this year in the bizarre circumstances, being careful with overconfidence and looking at your overall long-term financial plan to make your decisions. I want to talk a little bit more about taxes. We've got that more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Oh man, that was hilarious. That's great. (laughs) Dude, that's all I can think about. Like there, because you're right, and, and sleeping fish, don't look any yeah. different than a wake fish other than the fact that they're not moving. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many t- how many I tried to catch it is funny because when when you when you did that with uh with your with your scuba gear on you'd see a bunch of bubbles when someone would do that because because <laughs> they were screaming it inevitably the causes you to just laugh like crazy <laughs> but with a snorkel you just there's this squeal and you can hear people it, 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 i don't know why it's so stinking funny but you're like okay and because you're confident and then and then you're like okay i'll do it with two hands and, and so you're like here hold my flashlight because we have these underwater flash hold my flashlight and i'm and i'm going to catch it this time and you go and you, and you can't ever catch a sleeping fish <laughs> So it's the most amazing thing. Oh, That's great, man. That's great. All right, let's pick it back up. We'll hit taxes. We can hit. We can go back to investments if there's anything else to hit there. What were you gonna do if you caught one? <laughs> oh yeah, that actually that's the. I don't know. I, every t- every creature we've ever caught, Grace says, "Daddy, can we keep it? Can we keep it, Daddy?" <laughs> So I'm I'm assuming there would have been this this and the boys say can we eat it dad can we eat it <laughs> this huge, this incredible plea to say can we get a saltwater tank dad and we'll just we'll yeah. put it in there and it looks like it wants to be my best friend can we just <laughs> so yeah oh, and it sounds just funny. like that actually yeah so that's that's great <laughs> um. I, right. I didn't yeah, you, were, di- you were saying something yeah, serious we, about we actually the need actual to get back here. to yeah so let's we can talk about. Um, we certainly can talk about investments or whatever, but let's talk a little bit more about tax strategy, potential tax changes, hit the Roth again, and maybe, you know, anything else. And then we can start wrapping this up. I mean, we can talk about, hey, it's likely there could be some health care and Social Security reform and other estate tax changes. So the point is, do we to, ta- do we talk about preparing yeah, for, I mean, financi- I- for your financial life? Do you want to tee that up and say, hey, there, there, are, there are some some areas of your financial life that are, that it will likely be changing no matter who wins. So that's yeah. your your tax situation, your health care situation, and potentially Social Security or your estate situation. Social I mean, Security and estate, and potentially your investment situation. Well, that's kind of actually that actually summarizes the whole show. Can you just do that? So, I would resummarize that for the people that are just tuning in. You can do a nine-minute monologue here, Mike. Nope. I can. <laughs> what other financial changes do you need to be considering right now based on where things are at with the election uncertainty and the potential of what's ahead here? And then specifically taxes. What any adjustments you need to make with your taxes. That's what we're talking about right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name's Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Make sure you're engaging with the show all over social media. You can find us wherever you're at. Just search the Wise Money Show. Follow us and 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 you can leave questions there, comments and everything else. And then also check out more information on the show. You can find us online, wisemoneyshow.com. Previous episodes are there. Team bios there are there. You can leave questions right there on the right. So check that out as well. Okay, so we're still talking about this is we're we're recording this on Friday. Airs on several places Saturday. As of the time we're recording this, we don't know who the president is, but there are potential implications that we can start to see. And I think one of them, I don't think I don't. And Kevin, you're a little more politically charged than I am. I don't think there's ever been someone that has 
one denomination campaigning on raising taxes. And yet, if Joe Biden pulls this out, I think he might be the first one. Nevertheless, in light of the potential of the largest deficit we've ever seen, so not a lot of fiscal conservatives on the conservative side, and um, the the campaigning on raising taxes, um, pulling back the Trump tax cuts, should you be preparing right now to maybe pull some income into this year? Maybe. And, and, and at least being proactive with your tax situation in light of what we know. Yeah, for sure. If, if I'm expecting my tax rates to go up, and so this is this is where it's a little confusing to to know what the answer is because they they um, Joe Biden said hey we're not going to raise taxes on anyone making less than four hundred thousand dollars so he he did say that and then he also said and I'm we're also going to repeal the Trump tax cuts which yeah so, <laughs> and so it affects everybody right, right so 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 then you say well which one is it and and this is where again I go back to create your own personal growth plan and work on that one because we don't know it you might be you might make less than 400,000 and have nothing impacted you might make less than 400,000 and have less money in your check 18 months from now who knows we don't know and it doesn't it, it it's it's not a worthwhile investment of time to try to prognosticate about that the, so <laughs> i i agree completely there's a whole uh, industry created around that, though, that are always talking about. So, right. so I would let, be preparing. Let, yeah, I let those be... guys do it and say, well, what would we do if we anticipated that? Well, what what I would do, and again, we hit this a little earlier, if I'm a business owner and I will have meaningful losses, I would like to pull as much income into this year as possible. If I'm not a business owner, I would want to look at where is my tax bracket and how do I pay the most tax possible in the lowest possible bracket. Yeah, that, that's exactly the theme that I've been having conversations around for the past few weeks as well, because, I, I mean, here's what I can say confidently, and I might be wrong, but I'm still going to say it confidently. Uh, I don't anticipate that taxes are going to get even lower next year. Mm-hmm. Maybe they stay roughly the same for you. Maybe they go up. I just don't see them going lower, though. And so what we know right now, as we look back on history, is that you have an unbelievable tax code at your disposal right now, through the end of the year at least. And the question is, do you know how to take advantage of it? Do you know how to use that system within your financial plan to do exactly what Kevin just said, pay as as much pay tax on as much income as you can in the lowest bracket that you can, which happens to be right now for many people. Yeah. And so if you were on the fence, kind of not real sure whether or not you should push some income to next year or pull it into this year, if you don't even know how to do that, then now is the time for you to use this window of opportunity between here and the end of the year to get your tax projection done, to get connected with your certified financial planner and your CPA and figure out how you're going to take advantage of the time that still remains with this tax code. Right. If you are an adult child who has elderly parents and your elderly folks are saying, hey, we're not going to pay any taxes this year. Guess what? If your folks aren't, it's quite possible that you will yeah. w- when they're gone. I, like I, I think of two different camps here. It, I, meeting with some folks this week who are, uh, who are retired, but they haven't drawn Social Security yet, which is a great position. They've prepared really well. They've got, they've got some other investments, some other cash, and they're just living on that. And and um, but you look at that and you say, OK, well, your income is going to be higher in a couple of years. We know that because you're going to turn on Social Security in either two years or three years because we've done the planning. So we know your income is going to be higher. So therefore, should we invite some income into this year to pay tax at these low rates? And the answer is yes. So if you're in that camp, I would str- I, you've got to start this conversation right now, immediately. The other camp is, no, I'm already retired and I'm on Social Security, but I got to start RMD in a couple of years. 
and Required I really, minimum distribution. That's right. And I, and I really don't need the money. Uh, I'm not drawing money out of my IRA right now. That, that's the other scenario. You're going to have to, you're, we know your income is going to go up in a couple of years. There, at best, we're at today's good rates. And it's very possible and likely we're at higher rates. So I'm talking to both of you. Run, don't walk to your certified financial planner. And this is, again, an investment professional or a financial advisor that just does investments does not cut it. They don't cut it anymore. They are going to be obsolete because this is the help that you need. Yeah. If all you do is work with someone who sells investments, who has never talked to your CPA, you need to get that fixed. And if you don't have someone preparing your taxes, and again, I make the distinction between tax preparation and tax planning, but if you're if the person preparing your taxes is not also helping you with this planning piece, you need to work with a certified financial planner. I agree. Can I change the subject for just a second? No. <laughs> uh, w- one thing to watch out for as well, maybe an opportunity, we don't know how long it will be um, at your disposal. Uh, I- I'm still looking at the interest rate environment as well. And some of you have not taken advantage of really crazy low interest rates yet. Can I interrupt you? Please. You may. Okay. So it is interesting because you could look at what the stock market has done this week, its response, and say, actually, Wall Street doesn't matter who's in the Oval Office because that's not really who's in control. Who's in control is Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, and really his uh, all of the other central banks around the world that are just going to continue printing money and keeping interest rates low. Had a huge announcement from the Federal Reserve this week. Why huge? They didn't change anything. They just kept interest rates low. And so actually gave grave warnings about the economy, but kept interest rates low and the market loved it. <laughs> and, but, but keep in mind, the Fed controls the short end of interest rate um, you know, spectrum, if you will. The longer end of the spectrum is controlled by supply and demand. It's investors making their own choices in response to the changing environment. And on that longer end of the spectrum is the 10-year treasury, which is probably the closest thing that gives us an indicator of where mortgage rates are going to go, for example. And the, the issue could be um, if, if, there, if the markets begin to believe that more stimulus is coming, more borrowing is coming, um, and, and therefore more printing of money to help fund this, more treasuries um, being, being issued, the, the, the risk is, is that interest rates start to tick higher in anticipation of inflation. We don't know how long low interest rates are going to be around, but you know they're here today. Now is the time to figure out how to take advantage of it, if that makes sense in your plan. I I absolutely agree. And so you don't want to miss this opportunity either. And you want to make a wise decision. So figuring out, do you need a 15-year loan or a 30-year loan? Should you pay extra on it or should you maybe even do the opposite and do a cash out refinance? That's a financial planning decision. That's a financial planning decision you've got to make in the context of all six areas of your financial life. So you got to connect with your certified financial planner to get that right. All right, there's a few other things in your finances hanging in the balance here. We're going to talk about that and listener questions coming up. The Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Isn't it crazy? I mentioned fiscal conservative. I don't know if there are fiscal conservatives anymore. Uh, you start to wonder, don't you? Um, like that's no, almost, they're, they're that's are, almost like mean. <laughs> no, there are fiscal conservatives. They, they, they're, they're just none that seem to control the, any kind of levers. Yeah, maybe. Uh. Because, you know, people keep saying, well, taxes need to go up and entitlement programs need to be reformed and all of this stuff. And I'm like, well, yeah, what if we just stop, stop spending so much money? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I drive around and I look and I'm like, this is what it looks like if you're living on borrowed money. Well, this is interesting. So I, uh, okay, this is good bonus content. I don't think I'd want to share this on the air specifically. Um, and then we'll jump into the last segment here. I'll keep it as brief as I can. So, um, I'm actually, I, I love perusing the Twitter. I, I actually <laughs> do. And, and I know the censoring stuff drives me nuts. And for some reason, I actually 
like it. When when I see something from what is it, Dave Dave Rubin, and mm-hmm. and he's like pointing some stuff out that's being censored, I actually that's entertainment to me. And I know, like, it's scary entertainment. I, like, I get it. And I've watched The Social Dilemma. If you haven't watched it, you need to go watch it because the amount of influence that just a few people have is unbelievable. And you need to cut that thing off. But, but I peruse it for different topics, comments, and, and so on. And I found the most fascinating. Oh, da, 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 da. so are we going to three or four? Going on to four. And are we doing listener questions? Wait, seriously, we're going to four? We yeah. are. Oh, my word. I'm losing. <laughs> oh, I can't even find it. Couldn't treat. Well, that's um, part of the other problem with, with Twitter. Well, it was talking. I saw. I think it was Peter Schiff, who's a Goldie. So you just got to be. You got to know that about him. But very intelligent. And so I think. So Peter Schiff said something about the challenges with these low interest rates. We're basically taking tomorrow's consumption or future spending and bringing it into today. Right. And we're doing that, and that has potentially two side effects in a normal economy. And one side effect is boosting growth today and potentially causing lower growth in the future. That's what we're signing up for. And the second is because that's debt that is relatively inflexible, you are not as nimble, adaptable to changes in the future. So both scenarios mean good today, greater risk tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that is the concern. That's why I bring up fiscal conservatives. So if you're listening to this and you want to cancel culture, I'm not talking t- talking about conservative versus liberal. I'm not. I'm just talking about where where is the line with spending? Like, how do we choose spending? If there's no like, what what is the what are the guardrails? Because I know the risks, and what's happening right now increases risk. I mean, you're talking about this obviously at a national level, but. Man, I wish I could bottle up everything you just said and drive it to the household level. Into the individual. Because it's the same principle, right? If you spend today tomorrow's income, tomorrow you will have less to spend. You will feel it eventually, right? Right, and so all this creates uncertainty because when you say, all right, well, if they're going to forgive student loan debt, then if I have a child in college, I should get as much in the way of loans as possible. And so you could play these games uh, until the cows come home. Let, let's actually, so we are we are going into questions, okay. and I, but I want to wrap up the election stuff yeah, because there's, okay, a, there's one more message that we need to share. Which and is? and um, y- y- you'll figure it out. You're, gonna, you're the one that has to share it. I'm just kidding. Um, that could take the whole segment. It could take half. If it takes half, let's go to um, my son is a senior in college, and we're paying and we're paying out of college or out of cash mm-hmm. flow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Should we take out loans instead? Mm-hmm. Um, and then we could even go to the next one. So the Eric and South Bend one I made for a show coming up. Okay, cool. So I'm actually just going to clear that out of here. So okay. All right. Oh, stomach just growled. Did you catch that? <laughs> Thanks for being with us. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. And my name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. If you've missed anything, good news. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on our YouTube channel, along with daily next wise steps, wise financial nuggets that show up every single business day on that channel. So go to YouTube, search Wise Money Show, and subscribe to it, like it, share that content, and leave comments as well. All right, let's wrap up. Before we get into listener questions, let's wrap up some potential other financial implications of what happened with the election. And here's the thing. We still don't know. Again, I'm going to say it again because it needs to be disclaimed. Um, we are recording this on Friday and it's going to air most places on Saturday and then it will live in the ether forever. And so I don't know when you're consuming this, but as of this moment, the election appears as though Trump has a very narrow way to win and likely very contentious. I mean, can you imagine if it, if he pulls it off, the polarization that will happen in the country will be, we've seen nothing yet. It looks like it's going Biden, but we don't know. So what are some other 
Uh, I would say at considerations. And I think, we think, no matter who's in the White House, there's some potential preparation you need to be doing right now. It is likely over the next four years, regardless of who's in office, we're going to have to tackle health care. We're going to have to tackle health care. I will tell you right now, as a company here at Corhorn Financial Group, we got our renewal for our health insurance plan. And uh, guys, are you okay? You want me to generalize it or can I say it? You can say it. An Go increase it. of what was it, 27% increase? 26 mm-hmm. point in change. 20 And 27% increase in the health insurance premiums for a relatively young group of team members here. Crazy. There's likely going to be some health care decisions hanging in the balance in the next four years, regardless of who's in the Oval Office. You need to be preparing. If you're stuck because you don't know how that's going to go, just get ready. Be preparing financially for whatever change could come. Second, Social Security reform. It, it's very, very possible. We get some increased tax rates on people making over 400000 We have increased Uh, the Social Security wage limit, we could do something. There's proposals happening. It was part of the Biden tax plan that he campaigned on. It's likely Social Security reform could be coming, okay? Get prepared. Start preparing. And then the final one that I'd bring up is we have had unbelievably generous and lax estate tax laws, rules, taxation, let me say. And we've got this exemption amount that, gosh, when I got in the business, this is like I walked barefoot in the snow uphill both ways. Like when I got in the business, it was a million bucks. If your estate was less than a million, great, you didn't pay tax. If it was more than a million, you were getting sucker punched here with a 50% tax. That estate tax exemption is now $11 million. And if you don't use it, it goes to your spouse, $22 million. So basically, no one except the Steinbrenners or Jeff Bezos will pay a state tax. I'm, I'm joking, but that doesn't impact a lot of people. A state tax is something you've probably lost track of. That is set to sunset. That is set to sunset. So whoever is in office needs to deal with, do we keep those high estate tax exemptions or not? Your estate plan might be impacted. So how do you prepare? Sit down with your certified financial planner, have them review, review your documents and say, are you at risk of needing to update these? Yeah. I, I'm glad that you answered that question. How do you prepare? Um, Because yes, you need to be preparing, but the how do you prepare is really a who question. Who helps you through this process? Who's going to help you take the seemingly disconnected, um, you know, uh, unassociated issues and bring them together in a single plan that helps you know what your next step should be? Because the reality is, you know, here we are in 2020 trying to anticipate maybe how the rule book could start changing over the next four years. We don't know. Uh, Nobody knows, right? Um, Maybe there's a lot of people with certain agendas and certain intentions out there, but we don't know what they're going to be able to achieve as a group. That um, that, That is one of the wonderful things about our government structure is that there is a separation of power and... Uh, In my mind, uh, Americans have voted here to try to not um, concentrate too much power in too few hands. And that's wise, in my opinion. Too much power in too few hands has never been good in history. And so there's going to be battles that happen um, in Congress with the White House. And and I'm saying that not even really knowing what the outcome's ultimately going to be yet. We just know that that's going to be the truth. We don't know what rules are going to change, but we know that time keeps on marching on, and yes, change keeps on happening. And the question is, do you have a mechanism? Do you have a process for adapting? Do you have a process for changing your plan along the way as the rules change? And that's the value of your certified financial planner. That's why you need a coach walking alongside you, helping you not predict, not anticipate what changes are going to happen, but adapt or react as they become more known. And if you don't have that in place yet, now is the time. There's enough change that we can all expect to have coming in the future that you prepare by getting the who in place, getting that trusted advisor to walk with you. I I couldn't have said it better. And gosh, what a great summary of how America voted. It's so so close 
that they're that that the statement is loud and clear. Well, number one, you can never trust a poll again ever. Ever, yeah. ever, ever. <laughs> right? I mean, those folks are on unemployment right now. They like they you missed the mark completely. But the other is that um, America collectively voted for a balance of power. I mean, a balance. That's exactly true, Josh. And and that's great wisdom you shared. So take your next wise step. Take your next wise step. Don't be stuck by this distraction of what could be ahead. I don't know. I'll just freeze. When right. we lack clarity, we don't move forward. And and clarity provides energy for you to move forward. I get that. So here's the clarity. Continue taking steps towards your financial freedom. That relies that that responsibility lies on your shoulders, working with that who, that trusted advisor. Yeah. We stack positive moments one after another and those moments create momentum. That's right. All right. So we're going to transition here to questions from fans of the show. I know it's been a few shows since we've been able to tackle a lot of these. And I, I we got a good one here from an individual on, on the YouTube who submitted this question. My son is in his senior year of college, and we're paying for it out of cash flow. That's wonderful. Should we encourage him to take out loans instead? Now, this is interesting because you've got two potential ways to view this. One, you could look and say, I'm using cash flow. I could take that cash flow and invest it, and interest rates are low. So I could probably get a better return investing it versus today's interest rates. That's one. The second way to consider this is, geez, there's been all this talk about about student loan forgiveness. And the way the election might be panning out here, it seems like it's been on the blue agenda for a while. Maybe we actually get student loan forgiveness. I better take some loans. So I see that in both of these, and they're both both um, both of those issues embedded in this question. What are your guys' thoughts? Uh, Kevin, I'm curious to hear your opinion on this. As a parent, uh, you know, of college age kids, you yeah. you're you're kind of facing this with your peer group, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, do, do you do you lean on principle and say, hey, if you don't have to borrow, don't borrow? You know, you're affording it out of cash flow here. Um, so so why borrow money? There are times when you could afford to write the check, but maybe it makes sense to borrow. Um, you know, I, I think of times when blasphemy, by the way, that is that sounds to some I, as I know. craziness if you're not doing financial planning. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, I'm thinking of um, folks who maybe have dollars invested for college and they're temporarily down because maybe you didn't move them to safety mode early enough. Um, I, I'm thinking of past circumstances here, not current circumstances necessarily. But that might be a time to borrow the money temporarily to give time for the investments to bounce back, let's say. That's not the scenario that's being asked here. Um, but there is, there's still also part of me wondering, okay, uh, are you running money through... Uh, a 529 plan. I don't know if this is an Indiana resident or not, but that plays into it as well. You know, making sure that you're uh, depositing into the 529 plan to get your tax credits, any any upfront tax benefits, and then pulling it back out from from there. But but this idea of borrowing money in anto- in anticipation or in hope that it's just going to get forgiven, that part I I struggle with personally. But I'm curious to hear. This doesn't apply to yeah. me, right? So, it, 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 before I answer your question, the, the the risk is if I if I'm borrowing money to use loans to pay for school because the five twenty nine plan is off ten percent. Remember, the five twenty nine plan money distributions have to match up with years where I've got expenses, so I can't. I, I can't just say, hey, I'm going to let this grow for the next five years and then pull it out and pay off a loan once my kid's out of school because I think the market will be higher. So you just could go out and have another child. You could do that. <laughs> or maybe you have a younger child. 18 <laughs> year wait. Yes. For that right. Strategy yeah. to play yeah. out. It's quite a plan. So I, the, I, my personal opinion is I would not do anything in anticipation of a a potential government move. Uh, I wouldn't. I, w- I would say I'm going to pay for this out of cash flow. I'm going to pay for this out of resources. Because what starts to happen as soon as you get in your mind, someone else is responsible for my stuff 
or my behavior, all of a sudden your your, your ownership just of that thing, whatever it is, the ownership. Hey, it's it's my, if it if I see it as my responsibility to make sure that my kid's education gets paid for, then I better do it. Now, some folks don't see that, yeah. and they say, "Hey, I see it as my kid's responsibility." Okay, that's fine. But I even with your child, I would encourage them to incur as little cost as possible to get the greatest amount of skill possible that they can then go and trade for money. Yeah. And yeah. borrowed money lets you spend more on your education. It it, it doesn't Correct. even encourage exactly what you were just describing. Spend as little as you can to get the maximum skill. Well, when you're using borrowed money, eh, you know, suddenly that really expensive education is within reach, it feels. You're just going to pay for it for a decade afterwards. Yeah, suddenly I really have to go to that concert <laughs> or, would, or that football game. I'm sorry. I'd yeah, make sure that you have – that you're on track with your other financial goals because if this cash flow is currently going towards college but actually needs to go towards retirement or go towards something else, then really you should probably get loans. But I, I agree. I wouldn't speculate, and I certainly wouldn't put the responsibility on someone else's shoulders. Let me say one more thing before we wrap up. Um, I, I want to go back to the election. The we are much more together than what we it seems on the media. So I will tell you, at least from the Wise Money Show, we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it, regardless of your political preference, okay? I think we need more of that. So we love you, nothing you can do about it. All right, on behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, and myself and all of us at Corhorn Financial Group, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.